Hey everybody, my name is Austin. I'm a product designer here at GitLab. I'm going to jump into the agenda for this week. Do my best to keep it under three minutes if I can. I mentioned that there was a pattern going into pajamas about using ellipsis at the end of a text button when there is a subsequent action needed. So give that a read, check it over. Keep that in mind as we're developing out new pages and new buttons in GitLab. He and asked this uh, really good question about, hey, what if we replace the new page with the modal workflow when creating and editing compliance frameworks? I brought this forth to the foundations um, office hours, had a really great discussion there. I'll give you the TLDR. They the foundation team supports the idea of using a modal in this instance. However, there are still some strong opinions on other GitLab team members' thoughts around if we should be using modals for this type of workflow. I'm going to try and explore some other options before we settle on a direction. But generally speaking, I love the idea. I think I'm going to continue hashing it out and see what other options we have available to us uh, to try and keep the user engaged in the workflow. Next, I promoted this issue up into an epic uh, around unifying users, keys, and tokens pages. I would really love to see this all kind of get synthesized together. Still have some more to do in terms of cleaning up the different pages and how they would um, be displayed, but we're making some progress. I just wanted to pull this under its own epic. That way it didn't seem like there was a bunch of issues and conflict with each other. Next, uh, Marcel brought this great question of like, where should compliance framework the setting itself live? I totally recognize that there could be a better place for this. I'm gonna look into setting up some tree testing in the future to go validate a better placement for this, figure out how we can keep it discoverable without necessarily taking the most valuable real estate in the settings area of the application. We also did a video on unfiltered discussing um, cascading settings. Uh, Daniel is working on an effort in access. It brought back uh, this idea from a long time ago about configuring protected branches and groups um, and ideas I had around like a toggle for allowing or disabling changes. So now I really need to go back and sync with them and make sure we're all on the same page there. Had a really great discussion today actually about this idea to bring in the compliance like pipeline configuration file that we are releasing into this policy builder. So there's a lot more to be explored here, but generally it would be really cool if instead of having to do it in your compliance framework, you could build these policies for your groups that could incorporate this logic um, that might make the user's experience a little bit more seamless. Right now there are a lot of steps to get things set up and configured and tying together some of these features would be super useful in the future. So be on the lookout for more on that. We're still hashing out you know, details around MR approval settings and rules, but one thing that I've been trying to get through is a small change just to essentially add approval settings to clarify these little details here. Thank you, Tan and Ian, for helping me with some of the front end cleanup that I wanted to touch on as well in this MR. I completed a course this morning uh, for accessibility for web design. It's really great. Highly would recommend if you wanted to check this out. This led me to a couple ideas. Um, one thing that I think would be super helpful would be adding to our MR template. This also came from Ian as well, since he was doing this for setting up and testing. I think it'd be super helpful to identify what accessibility conformances we test. Um, I have been terrible about doing this in the past, and this would help remind me, and I'm sure other people, to do this as well. If you have any thoughts, please drop them in there. And lastly, I was working on a merge request to further extract our jobs to be done statements. We did a good bit of effort in this in the fall to actually launch our first job statements, which were good, but not at a high enough level. They were a little bit too descriptive. They were more like user stories, more like tasks. So I just reworded some of the language here. I'll share this out in Slack as well. But the overall thinking is 
these jobs are going to be helpful for us in completing category maturity scorecards, which might be like an OKR in the next quarter. So having this good foundation of job terminology will set the wheels in motion for what's to come in future OKRs. Okay, I didn't think I kept it under five minutes, but I did my best. So have a good week.